So for those unaware, the game manual allows certain non-VEX components to still be legal as per rules R8 and R21 in the game manual. So certain objects, such as like rubber bands, are allowed to be used even if they're not sold by VEX. The same applies for fasteners covered by rule R21 for things such as screws um, and nuts. Fasteners, as long as they don't introduce additional functionality, which was clarified in a Q&A in spin-up, I will, no, over under, in order to clarify that like weight savings and potential shorter screws aren't considered additional functionality because VEX in limited capacity sells much worse versions of what I'm about to cover in this video. Additionally, I'm only going to be ranking these categories based on additional functionality that they introduce over non-VEX parts. So if they're very, very similar to a part that VEX already sells and it's only slightly different, it's probably not going to end up on this list. And I'm not covering every single item. I'm only doing a top 10 because there are thousands of different options that you could do here that are all slightly different. So you might have some favorite thing that doesn't make the list. Additionally, things like plastic are commercially available to buy. Here is the full list of legal plastics, um, which I'm not going to cover all of those. I'm kind of going to treat those all as one thing because there's a lot of different options and I'm not familiar with all of them. Also, just to note as I'm editing this video, um, the camera had some trouble focusing in on some of the smaller objects that I'm showing off, so I apologize for some of the weird cuts. So starting with number 10 on the list is the bike pump fitting. Now, this is kind of weird that it's legal. Um, Vex doesn't actually sell these at all, but it's specifically in the legal pneumatics parts document, and you can buy them off of SMC. So the advantage of this is this is a Schrader valve right there, so you can fill up your air tank without actually getting to the air tank. As you can see, this air tank, this is from the 15-inch Vexu robot. It's like wedged in there. Getting an actual um, piece of a air pump in there would be really awkward. It doesn't actually fit in there. But with this, clamp it on directly to the outside of the robot. And then in order to fill it up, you also need an on-off valve, which come in the pneumatics kits, or you can just buy them directly from SMC. You open it up. And then as you can see, you don't actually lose any pressure when you open it, just enough to fill up the tubing on the hose. Then you fill that up, twist the valve off. So you're not actually gonna lose any air when you release that. You can take this off as slow as possible. And then if you're really concerned for weight savings during the match, you can even take it off during the match and just have the on off valve there. So handy part, makes it easier to fill up the tank, makes it so you can put your tank in some extra weird spots, and also means you're gonna lose less air. Number nine on the list is size 32 rubber bands. For those not aware, VEX actually has three different legal sizes of rubber bands. I can't remember if VEX actually sells the size 32 or if they just have 64, but 32 rubber bands are three inches in diameter if you were to lay this out as a circle, and they're also pretty thin. An eighth of an inch wide, and they are three inches in diameter when you lay them out as a circle. So they're pretty thin. They don't apply a lot of force. They're good if you want to do something small. And these, this brand in particular is extremely durable. They have a very hard time snapping. Um, you have to stretch them out pretty far in order to get them to snap. Um, you can see we have one on the 15 inch Vexi robot right there, just running across on the intake. And that has been stretched out like that for uh, probably about three months now. And it's still doing great. So yeah. Definitely a good useful rubber band, but there are definitely things that are better. So number eight on the list is the nylon screw. I bought these off of RoboSource, and these are half an inch long. Um, they're pretty handy for weight savings. They weigh about the sixth of the weight of the steel screws, which you can see them side by side right here. It's one of the red Skittle screws from RoboSource as well. And unlike the regular screws, which are usually star drive or hex drive, these ones are flathead driver, which is a bit inconvenient. You need to buy a separate driver or have a little tool attachment in order to use them. And they're great for weight savings. I use them on bearings. And that they tie right in with number seven on the list, which is the nylon nut. Um, I think these are a little bit better because they don't need an extra driver. You can just use the standard nut driver if you want to use these or an open-ended wrench. They're also a bit sturdier. Sometimes the nylon screws, if you tighten them too much, will snap. And the nuts here are also low profile. So you can use them for uses outside of bearings if you need something really low profile and they're easy to file down. Same thing goes with the screws. Um, you can file the screws down. This is the same size as an orange screw or 0.375 inches because we need that for spacing. I use these for bearings on the robot. You can see right in there, nylon screw, nylon nut. All the bearings are like that. I like this better than zip tie bearings because zip tie bearings is a little scuffed. It's harder to undo. And the version two bearings are better anyways because of the little square peg they have. And they work pretty much just like any other screw other than that. 
So yeah, I'll just attach these three wides together because I have tons of three wides lying around. So you can just put the screw in, nut, get that on. The nut driver. Nut driver on the back, flathead. Tighten that, again, you don't want to tighten it super tight because you can definitely snap these. Yeah, there you go. Um, nothing too fancy there, just a typical screw, but they're about the sixth weight of the steel ones, so useful for weight savings. Number six is a very unique, very exciting part that opens up tons of new build possibilities, and that is the thin nylock nut. So you can see on the right is the regular Vex thick nylock nut, and on the left is the thin nylock nut from Robosport specifically. So these are thinner, they're about half the weight, and they're just better in every way. Um, never use the thick nylock nuts once you buy these. So in addition to being thicker, you can see inside there, you have to get it threaded in more than you do on the thin one in order to actually reach the locking part, which means that sometimes you can get away with using a shorter screw as well. And the reason that I rank these better is even though they're only half the weight as opposed to the nylon nuts, which are um, a sixth of the weight, you're gonna use these everywhere on your robot. Like, here's Fever Dream. Um, you got like two thin nylocks there. You got a thin nylock there, thin nylock there. Uh, you got some more thin nylocks there. And you're just not gonna have anywhere near as many bearings as you are thin nylocks on your robot. So I think that this is a bit more useful, just not by a lot. But nylock nuts, they're everywhere, so you're going to save a lot of weight. It adds up. So next up on the list is just plastic in general. Um, I wasn't going to go through and rank every single kind of plastic because there's like 10 different legal plastics. And polycarbonate is really the only one I have experience with. Um, plastic is just awesome. Different parts have different usage. Polycarp is just kind of your general use. You can have like Dalaran, which is a bit stronger, but more brittle. You can also have stuff like Peak, which is like as strong as steel pretty much. So there's tons and tons of different uses. And plastic is just awesome to have on your robot. Um, especially if you have a CNC machine, like there's some plastic there, plastic there, plastic there. Like you can just put plastic everywhere. Um, it's awesome, like for random uses. Like I think I use them for all my string shooters um, on the spin-up robots. Like, their plastic is just awesome. It can go everywhere. Um, tons and tons of uses. It's just the only bad part is, is it's limited in use to only being, like, a certain size. Biggest downside with the plastic, though, is Vex does sell some plastic. Um, it's just that their shapes are a little bit more restrictive. And you can still get regular polycarbonate from Vex. It's just if you want, like, a big sheet, you have to go from, like, RoboSource or McMaster Car. So next up on the list is 117B rubber bands. Now, a lot of teams don't know that these are actually legal because I think Vex sells like one of them in like the pulley kit or something. So like they're really weird sizes. Um, they're still an eighth of an inch um, wide, but they're seven inches in diameter. And they're, they're awesome. They stretch really, really well, at least this brand does. And they actually have a lot more force than you would think they have for how thin they are. Um, we got them sitting on the 15 inch world's robot roller over here as the intake. As you can see, those are stretched out pretty far. Um, and they're wrapped all the way around. These things can stretch an insane amount. I think the intake roller got entangled with jacks in one of our matches against them, and it ended up stretching like four or five feet across the field before it finally snapped. Oh, there is an entanglement. That rubber band is stretching halfway across the field. It is still holding strong. These robots are going to do their best to try to separate from each other. 30 seconds left in the match. Their robot, they are trying to get free from their rubber band intakes, and they finally are 20. So yeah, these things, really awesome. They have a ton of power in them. I use them on the slingshot for spin-up, and yeah, they're really great. I definitely recommend buying some of these. The extra long rubber bands, it essentially makes latex tubing completely useless. The top three on the list, we have shoulder screws right here. So it makes a shoulder screw special as it has like this a shoulder part, essentially, that's non-threaded and a little bit thicker than the other ones. You can see it next to a regular screw of the same size right there. So the advantage of shoulder screws is they are awesome for cross braces. Anytime you have a cross brace and you don't need spacers, like right there, you should use the shoulder screws. They're gonna dramatically improve your build quality if you don't use them already. So just like a point of comparison, you can see here, it's just three wides attached to each other, mounted with two. These are not shoulder screws right here. And you can see it has a fair amount of slop and wobble there. You definitely have to add a lot more screws or tighten them down 
But even then, who's to say that you don't accidentally tighten them down a little bit off of your 90 degrees? And this is where shoulder screws come into play. Our shoulder screws have significantly less wobble. That's the same amount, exact same setup right there, just two screws, um, not tightened any differently. There's actually no nuts on the back of that. So yeah, significantly less wobble. It's gonna make aligning your structures way easier and it's just gonna dramatically improve your build quality. Would highly recommend these. When I got these, definitely helped me out a ton. Now, number two on the list is paracord. Um, really just any specific string will work, but I personally prefer paracord when I'm doing stuff. So paracord, um, it's essentially got like this outer casing and then like thin wires on the inside. Um, one of the downsides is, is whenever you cut it, you really wanna melt the edge, edges with a lighter. There you go, you can kind of see melted edges. So uh, safety top three priority, make sure you don't accidentally hurt yourself there. I've burnt myself a couple times doing this. And string is awesome, just even outside of end game for spin up, just allowing you to do different weird movement things. So one of the wings you can see here is this wing, just pops down vertically. Now, if you just wanted to have the cylinder directly mounted to this, it would be kind of awkward. So instead you have the cylinder mounted over here, piece of paracord attaching them and cylinder extends, paracord goes out, paracord pulls it back in. It's a little bit less power efficient, but it works great for just spacing reasons too. Same thing with the front ring wing right here. You can see it goes down. That's actually connected with a little cylinder in there and there's a piece of paracord running out in between them. So paracord, it just opens up all sorts of possibilities. Um, weird angles for schematics is just one thing. I mean, you can use them for winches. Um, I use that, I use a piece of paracord for my winch on the spin-up robot. Paracord is just awesome. Highly recommend getting some string for um, just the unique structural opportunities it allows. Well, the number one spot on the list goes to the 64 rubber bands. Um, I love the platinum rubber bands for these. These bands are absolutely insane. They're a quarter inch wide and three and a half inches in diameter. So I can put them back to the other ones from earlier. There is the 32 rubber band right there. And there is the 117B band right there. But 64s are definitely the most versatile and the best. Like I use these everywhere. Um, like on the wing over there, you can see 64 band um, hang. We've got the 64 bands. They're pretty strong and definitely one of the most versatile rubber band types. I think I've used this type of rubber band on pretty much every single robot that I've built for the last few years since I got these. So I would definitely recommend you're always going to find a use for them. Having good, high-quality rubber bands is something that you just cannot underestimate. It allows you to do so many different things with being more efficient with your power usage. So I think that pretty much wraps everything up with the video. If you have any questions or other parts that you think are useful, feel free to comment those down below. And if you do have ideas for future video suggestions, please leave those because this idea was actually from a user in the comments who came up with this idea. So I do listen to these and try and incorporate any cool ideas, I think. All right, see you in the next video.